Oh, hello everyone. It's uh, Susie Acker, Crypto Granny. I hope you're all well, being kind to yourself, uh, being beautiful to your beautiful animals, being uh, good to parents and family, uh, being beautiful to putty cats, your dogs, and just being kind to people in this world just to make it a better place. Now, today, um, before I'm discussing, which is US dollar doom will bring massive crypto boom. I uh, just want to do a bit of housekeeping. Don't forget we're having that Kobo wallet competition next week. Literally has a vault. It has a, a case that you can put your wallet in. It is bed, better than a Legend Nano S or a, or a Tracer. Uh, it basically is uh, destructive proof. Um, you can put it in the water. It's waterproof. You can literally put your foot on it. It's very hard to break because it's uh, aluminium, not made with plastic. Uh, also is made for the Bit Bitman uh, Bitcoin miners in China, so quite amazing wallet in itself. Uh, also, um, as I said, it's military, US military, American military standard and everything. And if someone gets it, it's actually tamper proof. And so get into the drawer, subscribe and just put a great comment and then we'll, we'll choose from that. And also, depending on the comments, we might even give away 150 xrp which will come out of my own pocket as well so because i know uh you know people are hurting pretty badly out there just um so anyway guys uh so this is what i'm talking about us dollar doom will bring massive crypto boom and um just going to the next slide so effectively what i mean by that is and this is what i'm going to be covering today is us dollar is doomed us yen particularly us against the yen or against any other currency but mainly the us is doomed and what does it mean for us uh, us residents uh, or citizens why is the us dollar going down and what sort of effect does the us dollar have on have on debt payments in a country uh, what does it mean in terms of if the us dollar is going down what does it mean for imports and exports and the price of goods uh, in, in the US. What does history tell us? Um, if we look at history, say Germany in the 30s or Zimbabwe or Turkey, what does that tell us? And we'll get an idea from those exactly what the history tells us. What what happens with a doom currency? What do people generally do? Uh, number seven, uh, what do governments generally do with a doom currency like Russia or China? What are they doing at the moment with the US dollar? What happens in crypto markets when there's a weak currency? And clearly people do look for alternative payment mechanisms and store of wealth outside of governments and obviously correlations as a store of wealth as well. Uh, why does gold go up when there's a doom currency or silver or platinum? And uh, why does there seem to be a strong correlation between cryptocurrency markets, Bitcoin and gold? And also, what are the indicators that there is a massive boom coming? Now, what indicators are we seeing on the ground that this boom is starting and it's coming? So that's pretty much what I'm going to cover. i just move myself over there because it's annoying. So the US dollar pretty much, I think, and it is pretty much doomed. The US dollar is in trouble. Uh, the mainstream is pretty much ignoring this, right? I believe there's a big crash coming in the US dollar. Uh, if you have a look at it technically on the charts, and if you look at the fundamentals of the US dollar, it looks really, really bad. Uh, the US dollar is a prime reserve currency, and that privilege is coming to an end. And like anything, we always see currency change over 150 after 150 years, roughly, okay? So the government, the US government will never pay back their debt. There is so much debt that it's literally impossible for the US government to pay it back. Uh, you know, the corporate bailouts from the US have only bailed out the wealthy, the top 1%, and they've sacked the small people down the bottom. You know, there's been tax cuts for the wealthy, which means the economic finances of the US are in a terrible shape. In other words, the balance sheet of the US, you know, just like the balance sheet of an individual is in a shocking shape. They just sit, keep using their credit card constantly and there's no income coming in no income coming into their bank account and that's the biggest problem so their debt position is getting worse and worse okay so also military spending you know is around 98 percent of the uh, of the budget and getting worse right and the u.s used to be seen as uh, a safe haven but it's not okay 
de-dollarization is happening and we're seeing it where countries are doing business in other currencies like the euro the aussie the pound and even the scandinavian currencies okay and that's pretty much what we're seeing so if we go to you know just the general finances and what we've seen uh we'll see that you know the federal spending on interest rates has is literally exceeding you know all other budget categories okay and that that spending on just interest rates alone and not the and not the principle of the government's debt you know is is massive now in 2018 it used to be about 230 billion uh, I think it's literally, you know, gone up much higher than that. And, you know, I think it's something like about, you know, now it's about 338 and it's in a big, down big downward trend. And according to my technicals, it looks very bad and it's just a major, major sell. Now, I believe the US dollar, because of the woeful debt position and because they're earning no revenue, they're not earning enough revenue to offset the incredible expenditure in, uh, you know, expenditure in terms of military spend and everything else. Uh, it's actually deteriorated the US balance sheet and they've, they've got massive trade deficits to China, uh, which means that they're basically importing goods from China and not creating enough imports themselves, which means they're not able to pay their debt and that's going to pressure the currency even more. And I do believe the US against the yen will drop below 100 down here, down, 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 and continue to drop around this 75 level, which is very, very bad, uh, very negative for the US economy and also for the US citizen, uh, particularly in the US economy and the government. So if we go forward, and the main reason for this is pretty much the massive debt position that the US have, okay? And if you look at this debt position very closely, according to this, the total national debt, and this is from yesterday, is 26 trillion. Each person owes owes to pay this debt out 80,000. Every person owes $80,000, and that would be the whole population. Per debt payer, because there's less taxpayers, I should say, uh, the actual taxpayer would have to... Uh, pay 214000 which is basically the price of a small house, right? Uh, which means people in the workforce. But if you go through these stats, it's even more alarming. So the largest the largest budget item has an interest of $338 billion, But when we look at the total interest paid on unfunded debt and interest, which means they haven't, you know, funded for it or paid it off, you know, we've got, they owe the USOs, 3.816 trillion now we're talking massive numbers here seriously and the total debt 81.246 which is contingent debts as well because they're not funded okay uh, we are talking massive massive numbers here now when you look at unemployed the unemployment rate because of COVID unfortunately is going up uh, according to this 26 mil officially unemployed is 16.2 but certainly gone up very fast. And, you know, clearly medium income has been going down for a long time because the middle classes are being squeezed all the time. Incomes are reducing and inflation's been rising over a 20 year period, which is not great. It means you're getting squeezed because your income's coming down and the cost of living is going up, right? And more and more people, unfortunately, are living in poverty, which is not a great story. Not a great story at all for the US government's finances because it means they cannot tax more people. You know, if there's more unemployment, they have to provide benefits. They're not getting tax revenue in at all. And at the same time, they're reducing corporate tax rates at the expense of the individual, which is not a great story. So they're basically, you know, there for the wealthy, but not for the average person, okay? So if we go to the next thing here, and we look at literally, you know, the money creation, and we look at, even if we look at currency and credit derivatives, currency and credit derivatives in 2020 are 692 trillion. That's what we're talking here. Up from 2000 of 92 trillion, we're seeing a massive exposure to currency and credit derivative swaps. Now, 
that has a lot of consequences, particularly if the US government is downgraded by Standard Poor's and Moody's from a triple A credit rating to technically a double A or even a triple B or something like that because they're not paying back their debts. And if they didn't pay back their debts, the interest expense or the interest rate on their debts would go up even higher because their credit quality is being downgraded. No different to me or you if we're not paying our bills, our credit goes down and we can't get any borrowings from anywhere else, okay, or the bank or whatever. It's the same thing for a government. If other countries lose faith in the US, like other foreign currencies like China or Russia or whoever, <clears throat> they'll stop providing the US with money, okay? And if they don't want to hold the US dollar because it's going down, then they don't want that exposure either of holding the US dollar. And that's not a great story either. So according to this, $6.9 trillion is held by foreign countries, right? And if foreign currencies lose faith in the US economic system or the entrepreneur system or the US's ability to generate income and revenue or the US's ability to pay back debt, they will not invest in the US, okay, in US dollar assets, which are often denominated in the US dollar. And the thing is with foreigners, if they buy US dollar treasuries or bonds with a currency that's going down, they actually lose money. <clears throat> and that's a bad story. And that's what we've got here, okay? So if there was a downgrade on the US, uh, on the US's country credit rating, from AAA to lower, then it's going to have even more effect on the debt that they owe countries because the interest expense will go up and it'll be even more disastrous. So going back to now looking at number four, a weak US dollar, what does it mean for imports and exports? Okay, and this, you know, could be any importer, you know, that, that basically imports any goods from, whether it be from China, whether it be from anywhere else. It's not good for, for the US because their currency is actually reducing and it's costing them more. And we know that the US has a major uh, import deficit to China. They import and import and import. And Mr. Donald Trump, the pre president, is trying to put an end to that. So it's like this, right? If the Euro, so we'll look at Euro US. If the Euro US rate was 1.1, .1, in other words, you know, uh, one US dollar is worth 1.1 euro, okay? In other words, the euro is higher than the US dollar, okay? Um, it would have cost, them, say, an importer 110, 110 million if it was at that level and they wanted to, you know, buy 100 euro worth of something, okay? So in terms of 100 euro, it would have cost... 110,000, 110 million US dollars if the rate was 1.1. But say six months, now it's this, which it is, 1.1836. If I'm an importer and I want to buy goods from Europe, it's now going to cost me 108 million US dollars, 118.36, rather than 110, right? So an extra... 8360, right? Which is, you know, seriously more expensive than what it was six months ago. So as, as an importer with the currency going down against every other currency in the world, it's going to cost you more. And if you're an importer bringing in consumer goods, whatever it might be, it's going to cost the consumer more because it's costing you more as an importer, okay? And that's not great. So what does it tell us, you know, in terms of history? You know, and if we look at these countries here, Germany, Zimbabwe and Turkey, when we see currency collapse, it's not a pretty sight. It's hyperinflation, which means inflation's through the roof. The cost of living is through the roof. There's poverty because the cost of basics, food and utilities are going higher and higher. And that's what we're seeing everywhere. High unemployment. There's a loss of faith in the government due to mismanagement. There's a loss of faith in the currency, the US dollar. There's a loss of faith in the banking and monetary system 
Often there's riots and there's a loss of faith in the status quo of how we used to live. And if we look at uh, any other country in the world, if we look at Germany, Zimbabwe and Turkey, there's some very common features with what happened. Germany, Zimbabwe <coughs> and Turkey all had massive deficits. They all had massive debts. They all had economies that weren't generating enough receipts or income to pay those debts. Okay? They all had a massively decreasing currency. Okay? Where literally foreign investors lost their confidence in investing in these current, in these, in these currencies. The German uh, Deutschmark, the Zimbabwe, the African, whatever it was called, and the Turkish lira. And very, very common traits. And it sounds very familiar to what we're hearing in the US with the US dollar, okay? In 1931, after the 29 stock market crash, and after the World War I, the Germans owed repatriation money, you know, to the, uh, you know, to the Allies. And Germany began printing, printing more and more Deutschmark, flooding the market, uh, the market, the investors didn't want it. There was bank failures, failure and government failure and their credit rating went to hell and back again. And the German mark wasn't worth anything. The same in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe used to be called Rhodesia, the fruit bowl of Africa. Okay. It was the most profitable place in Africa under Ian, in, uh, under Prime Minister Ian Smith. Then Robert Mugabe came in in 1980 as Prime Minister. And the, the economy and the currency declined, literally because it was a change in policy from white rule. All the whites were off the land. Uh, the, the people of the country were left to manage things. But the government was corrupt. Uh, there was a mismanagement of the economy. Economic growth started sliding down, down, down. More corruption. The currency weakened and weakened and weakened. And then we saw massive unemployment and hyperinflation. The same thing with Turkey, okay? Turkey's got major debts. The currency is weakening. The Turkish government uh, has to try and pay, you know, foreign currency borrowings with a weak currency. Uh, they don't have enough money. There's corruption and mismanagement in the economy. It sounds all very familiar to me, okay? And what's happening in Turkey, as we know, is they're buying cryptocurrency. Okay, specifically XRP, specifically Bitcoin, because they don't want to t stay in the Turkish lira that's, you know, lost more than 34% against the dollar this year. And even though the dollar's gone down, the Turkish lira has gone down even more. They want to buy cryptocurrency, Bitcoin. And we see this in uh, parts of Africa as well, Nigeria, you know, Nigeria, uh, Kenya, we see it in South America when the currency goes down, like um, like Venezuela, Argentina. Everyone starts buying cryptocurrency, uh, you know, like Bitcoin or XRP, because they don't want to be in the domestic currency, okay? And this is what we see, right? Um, making sure that's that one, yep. This is what we see. The herd is coming. Uh, as people uh, don't want to buy current uh, the currency, Companies often don't want to buy the currency. We see this two weeks ago with MicroStrategy. Uh, we saw it this week with Snapper, an Ottawa-based graphics software firm. The company announced that it didn't want to sit in cash but because it, it was concerned about economic growth and inflation but decided to buy Bitcoin instead, right? Again, as this, as, as this reference says, would you rather be in a currency where supply is increasing all the time and it's going to go down, or would you rather be in something that's going to hold its value and go up? Now, you know, this, this article even said, and this is a great article, please read it. It even talks about, you know, the do, uh, the gold, gold at $2,000 US, uh, which basically gold is scarce, just like Bitcoin, uh, providing it's not mined on the moon, uh, as um, Elon uh, Musk wants to do. But said differently, the US dollar has lost 99% of its purchasing power relative to gold over the course of the last century. 
Now, that's a shocker. So in other words, if you're holding US dollars, it's costing you more to live. And we're seeing this a lot. People are starting to hold, and not only people, but companies, okay? And that's massive. So, you know, we know there's only 25 million of Bitcoin. We know that. We know that there's hardly any supply and it will be as scarce as gold. And we all know that, uh, you know, even other cryptocurrencies will be scarce. OK, so what we've got here with a doom currency, what do other governments do? They buy anything but US dollars. They don't buy US bonds or treasuries because they're in US dollars. And why would they if the US dollar keeps going down? They don't want to lose money. So they transact in either other currencies rather than the US dollar or the SWIFT system where the government, you know, often blocks their accounts. They transact in their own currencies or, you know, the ruble or whatever or the one or they buy Bitcoin or gold. And that's pretty much what we're seeing, okay? Also, we also see that people look for alternatives outside the government. Gold, XRP, cryptocurrencies, other assets that maintain their value with inflation and assets that go up, not down. Also, over time, we have seen countries buy more gold. There's the demand for gold, and it's gone up, 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 and even higher, okay? So currently, it's basically 170, okay? 170, if I push this over here a bit better, you'll be able to see. So, you know, China, we know, is buying gold. We know, we know Russia's buying gold. Uh, we know that other countries with really weak currencies, the people are buying gold. So the demand for gold is going higher and higher and higher. At 170, uh, uh, what is that? Supply and ounces, okay? And there is a shortage of gold, and we can see that. And silver, as currencies go down, and obviously certain cryptocurrencies, right? So what are the indicators is going to be a massive crypto boom and it is coming and I absolutely hand on heart believe that, okay? It is coming massively. And just look at the headlines, right? The Winklevoss trend said the figure is the biggest booster of Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin because as the Fed keeps reducing and reducing interest rates, makes monetary policy looser and looser and they keep issuing more US dollars, selling more US dollars, right? It creates more inflation. And with more inflation, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies go up. Okay? Not only that, we see that the exchanges everywhere are expanding how they can make payments through XRP instantly, how they can do things straight away. And you don't have to carry the credit risk of the US government. Also, we see institutions like Fidelity one of the largest asset managers in the US, they've got more than two, two and a half trillion in assets under management. They're creating things like a Bitcoin index fund. So, you know, this is going mainstream where anyone from the street can invest 100,000 in a Bitcoin index fund. We see it with Grayscale, who now has $6 billion under management. You know, we're also seeing it even with the speeches, you know, pretty much federal chairman, uh, you know, uh, Powell, you know, he wants to leave monetary policy very loose, increase more money supply by printing more and more money, which is causing the US dollar to go down even more, okay? And that is all bullish for cryptocurrency markets, all right? And even now we see, you know, investors, uh, more and more investors can buy cryptocurrency because the security exchange new rulings are actually increasing uh, the definition of new accreditation for investors. So it's not just that, but more and more people are becoming aware of the decline in the US dollar and looking for alternatives. And more and more people are becoming aware that the cost of living is just astronomical and what the governments print in terms of data is just absolute garbology. And people are becoming more aware that it's just not to. And they have to take their finances in their own hands. And that's why there will be a massive boom in crypto markets. It's here. It's going to continue. 
and it will certainly continue for the next five to ten years absolutely hand on heart anyway guys if you've got any questions or anything else you'd like to add please uh, subscribe please click thumbs up I hope so uh, don't forget our we're going to be talking about Kobo next week and uh, having some winners at the end of the week next week or Monday after uh, and uh, you know we'll speak to you very soon but thank you very much for listening thank you